She's a 10 year veteran of the Air Force. And although I had known her and talked with her and spent some time, I did not know that until I learned about it in her pep talk. She is the past assistant director of resources uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, residential facilities at Georgia Southern University. Where I came to know her was when she was president of the Georgia chapter of IEHA. And with that, I actually worked with her and held a virtual session like this for our Rockstar program. Now, I also had to the pleasure of working with her while she was writing her new book, Cleaning for Health, The Emerging pa Pandemic Threat. She is currently the CEO of Exodus Management and Consulting. From Statesburg, Georgia, Statesboro, Georgia, sorry, I'd like to welcome to the stage Gloria Struthers. Her talk this afternoon is Leveraging Your Unfair Advantage. Gloria? Thank you, Dave. You know, my entire life changed as I watched Lethal Weapon from my hospital room. I remember Dr. Steve Mills examining me and with a gentle smile, he said, it's time to push. And by 9.45 p.m., my son Orlando was born. The year was 1990 when I became a teen mom and I joined the estimated 521,626 births to girls between the age of 15 and 19. Oh, the dirty looks, the name calling, not to mention the gut-wrenching shame. The reality and, and trauma of what happened to me didn't quite come full circle until I went back to school and attempted to re-engage with my friends. It was then I realized that I no longer fit in. I kept hearing teen pregnancy was now a crisis. And mainstream media, they now control the narrative of how I was being perceived in my community. They were saying that only 50% of teen moms received their high school diplomas and only 2% of two moms graduate from college. The one statistic that struck me the most was that 60% of households of teen moms were at the poverty level. It became clear to me that my choice placed me and my son at an unfair advantage. So I thought. You may be wondering if my entire talk is about being a teen mom. Of course not. But most of you, like me, perceive a set of circumstances as unfair advantages. Things like, I didn't get the promotion because I didn't get I don't have a college degree. Or the reason why we can't hire new staff is because of the pandemic. You know, perception is reality when it comes to identifying your unfair advantage. So now you're asking, how on earth did you leverage all of that? I'm glad you asked. Because in the next few minutes, I will share three strategies for leveraging your unfair advantage. I hope you're taking notes. Strategy number one is adopt the growth mindset. You know, unfair advantages aren't only about our strengths, but also about our circumstances. I had a burning desire to overcome the odds of living in poverty, but I had to identify what was inside of me that would allow me to change this outcome when I knew the odds of winning. That's when the light bulb went off. I knew that I was intelligent, that I was determined, that I was organized and that I was disciplined. But because that is what I also heard when I returned to school, I believe that if I worked hard, I could develop these abilities. That is what adopting a growth mindset is. It's the belief that you can develop any ability through dedication and hard work. And because of this belief, you desire to learn and you begin to think differently uh, and become more open to innovation and growth. Another quality of a growth minded individual is that they constantly seize moments to draw inspiration and learn from those who share a set of similar circumstances. In my case, I found Catherine Hughes. Catherine is the founder of Radio One, a media company that this particular enterprise owns 69 stations across the United States. But what most people don't know is that Catherine gave birth to her son, Alfred, at 16. She was a statistic, but now her net worth is $240 million. Or how about Fantasia Barino? 
We know her as season three American Idol winner, but you know what? She also gave birth to her son Zion at 16. She too was a statistic. Now her estimated net worth is $4 million. But can you imagine people not expecting you to succeed in life? So you tend to do things that ensure your defeat? That was me at one point. I believe the whole world was plotting against me, especially my seventh grade track coach. Did she know I was scholarship potential? I knew I was good. I ran fast. Everyone knew it but her. You know, come to think of it, at the beginning, she never put me in a race. Did she know something I didn't? Of course she did. I didn't have a clear understanding of my strengths and weaknesses. In other words, I wasn't self-aware. This brings me to strategy number two, become more self-aware. You know, Roger Crawford says that being challenged in life is inedible, but being defeated is optional. Self-awareness is vital to understanding your thoughts, emotions, your beliefs, and your behaviors. And when someone has a high degree of self-awareness, they know their strengths and their weaknesses and how these affect others and how they show up around the world around them. So for me to overcome that 60% chance of poverty, I had to leverage self-awareness, especially if I was going to change a fate that was meant to be a detour and not my destiny. So one thing I know for sure is that if you deliberately plan to be less than what you are capable of being, then I warn you, you'll be deeply unhappy for the rest of your life. You'll be evading your own capacities and your own possibilities. So to help you begin this journey of self-awareness, you can start by asking these three questions. You ready? Question number one, who am I? Who do I wanna be? Question number two, what are my greatest goals and desires in life? And number three, am I taking consistent action each day to move me closer to my dreams? That brings me to my last point, and that is strategy number three, cultivating the belief that you make a difference. You know, the dictionary defines belief as the acceptance by the mind that something is true or real. You know, there was this one time while I was in the Air Force, I, I recognized that we didn't have a medical tracking system, particularly for physicals. Um, I knew it would make a difference, but I didn't know just how big of a difference. Out the blue, the Air Force Command announced that we were having an unannounced health services inspection known as HSI. The HSI is actually a compliance-based inspection performed at Air Force medical units every three years. Its purpose is simply to assess medical processes used at each facility to ensure that we are adhering to Air Force standards. You know, lo and behold, they asked to see a process for tracking physicals. But you know, in retrospect, my unit would not have passed this inspection had it not been for me doing something that mattered. If you recall earlier, I stated perception is reality. This is also true when cultivating a belief of mattering or making a difference in your organization. And as a cleaning professional, you are touted as heroes who defend the public health. And on the other end, you can get something as simple as a microfiber tool to prevent cross-contamination. At that time when I was in the Air Force, I didn't know what I did matter when I took on that task. But today, that's the mindset of most cleaners. You know, society has created this perception that cleaners are unskilled, uneducated, and unworthy of comparable wages. That is what that, you know, that what they do don't matter, that it doesn't make a difference. And it's disbelief that causes more cleaners not to act upon opportunities to advance or grow professionally, which is why it is important to change the way the world views clean. To drive home this very point, I wanna share with you the story of Jane. 
Jane had a difficult life. She hopped around from one cleaning job to the next, particularly after a family member she was caring for died. She knew she had to get a more stable job to survive. That led her to accept a custodial job at a university. You know, a professor was conducting a study on what makes work meaningful. And at this point in Jane's career, she'd been with the university for 18 years. She was asked, why did you stay? Jane recalled in her first training that her supervisor pulled out the dictionary and defined the word custodial for her. A custodial is a person who has responsibility for or looks after something. Despite Jane being told her whole life that cleaning was an unskilled and dirty job, she said, realizing that I was looking after these buildings and everyone in them changed my belief patterns and it inspired me for the last 18 years. I finally realized that I mattered. Jane credits this one action from her supervisor for fueling her energy and a sense of self-worth for the last 18 years in her job. You know, as I end this talk, research suggests that people emotionally feel invested in their work. They feel valued for their expertise and connected to their coworkers and leaders when organizations incorporate mattering into their culture. It is just as crucial for leadership to ensure that everyone feels respected and they can bring their authentic selves to the table by providing space to welcome their contribution in various ways. Every individual has some unique attribute that makes them, that can make all the difference. And my ability to leverage my unfair advantage altered my entire fate as a teen mom. You know, once you dial in on what sets you apart, use it to your advantage. Doing this will allow you to perceive any set of circumstances as wins, W-I-N-S. You know, Napoleon says that you are the master of your destiny. You can influence, direct, and control your environment. You can make your life what you want it to be. Using these three strategies, adopting a growth mindset, becoming more self-aware and cultivating the belief that I make a difference allowed me to leverage my unfair advantage, which changed the trajectory of my life. I went from being a statistic to a success and it will do the same for you. So join me in my networking booth. If you want to learn more, I can't wait to share.